The following program has been generously funded by the Patterson Foundation. This book is cool. Hello, my friends. Welcome to This Book is Cool. My name is Beth Duda, and I'm the director of the Suncoast Campaign for Grade Level Reading. We have a most enjoyable book to talk about today. The title is Roxaboxin. Isn't that a great name? It was written by Alice McLearnan. We have a special guest to talk to us today about why he thinks this book is cool. With us today, we have Marco Lamano, who is SNN's meteorologist. Hi, Marco. Hey, how are you? Terrific. Thank you so much for being here today. Oh, thank you for contacting me. I, when I got the invitation, I was really excited. I don't really get to do a lot of things like this, so I appreciated it. Well, we have been having a marvelous summer talking to all kinds of people from our community about reading and selecting different books that they think are cool. So can you tell us one of the reasons why you think this book is cool? Definitely, I, I like the theme of it and I like the title because uh, none of us have heard the name Rocks and Boxen ever, basically. And then you see it's a play on words, you know, rocks and boxes. So Rocks and Boxen, you see the the rocks and stones lining up the streets, basically creating the streets, the businesses made of boxes there. And, you know, with a little imagination, uh, you can make the most mundane thing really exciting. This community of children that actually went on for several generations, there was this empty field and they created this wonderful playland, but they didn't need a lot of money to do it. They used rocks, they used old boxes, and they discovered a new way to play in rocks a box and every time that they went there. I, I'm wondering, when you were a child, did you ever create your own village or community? I will say this, I didn't do my own community, but, and I, I think it's fitting considering my career, I would, uh, I used to have an old cassette player and a, and a much older microphone, like from the 1990s. And I, my brother and I used to create our own radio programs with it. And they, they were, they were terrible, but they were mine. So they were very good at the time. And so it kind of came full circle. So I would say definitely it's, it's not that uh, I didn't use my imagination for things, uh, but it was just a different way. And I think all kids, everybody who's young has their own way of, of doing something more creatively. I love that you started recording your voice at a, a very young age and it helped propel you to the career that you have now, which is wonderful. And I think playing with our friends or, or just playing with our own imaginations can really help us discover the things that we're good at and the things that excite us and the things we want to learn more about. And certainly in your case, that that is true. I loved that every time they played in Rocks a Box and they had different things that would happen. You know, sometimes they would build new streets in Roxaboxen. Sometimes they would have businesses in, in Roxaboxen. And I loved the notion that everybody in Roxaboxen has all the money they need. Because, because they, they, no, exactly, because they used rocks and stones as their currency. So if you ran out of money, all you had to do is go and find more rocks, which seems like a great way to, you know, keep flush. I, I would be paying off and, and kids, hopefully the problem solved when you're older, but if, if rocks were currency, I would pay off everyone's student debt just like that. <laughs> <laughs> go find a quarry and take care of it all. Yes. <laughs> well, I also liked the way that the different characters in the book expressed their personalities by 
what they built in Roxaboxen. I, I remember the one little girl who decorated outside of her house, and I'm putting that in quotation marks because it really was just a box, but she decorated it in um, bits of uh, glass that she had found, different colored glass. It's interesting because I think uh, at the end, the main character, her house had amethyst in it as well. And of all the kids watching, how much they've learned. But, you know, there are so much more than just dull rocks. There are so many beautiful stones and rocks out there uh, that, you know, probably sometime elementary school, if you haven't yet, you know, a lot of times teachers will do uh, uh, a nice activity where you kind of, uh, you have all the sand and you're shaking it to, to scour for different rocks and rubies and emeralds and all that. So it wasn't just, you know, dull rock creating these things. You can, you can make beautiful, beautiful things out of really some of nature's most beautiful creations. And I loved the sense of legacy in this book that all of the children in this neighborhood created rocks a boxing in this empty field. And when the main character came back, like 40 years later, she could still see where they had lined up stones for the different streets. And she could, she could still see this magical place that they had created when they were children. It was very heartwarming. It's a reminder that we all, I mean, a lot of us, you know, we're imaginative in our own ways, but you have this almost limitless imagination. I think in large part because when you're a kid, you don't really know how the world works. So you really count on your imagination to fill in the blanks. And, you know, it, it was a little sad when you see that yeah, everybody grows up, everybody grows tall, as the book said, and they leave rocks of oxen, but they still have the memories. And so everything that, you know, all the memories you have as a kid and all the imaginative things you do, look what they did to this desert. You know, a desert you normally think is this kind of just dreary place, you know, it's just barren and desolate. Uh, but in this book, it was actually beautiful. And I do want to say that as a meteorologist, all a desert is, is a place that gets little precipitation. The beautiful vacation island of Aruba is technically a desert with cacti growing on it. So, you know, you see this beautiful desert, but deserts can very much be beautiful. You have tropical islands that are really desert islands and they're spectacular. Now you make me want to go find a nonfiction book to learn more about desert islands. That's pretty cool. Thank you for that. No problem. Now, we do encourage everyone to keep reading, certainly throughout the summer, but all year round, reading is important. Why do you think reading is so important for children? You know, there are some stories you're going to like. There are some stories that maybe you're not going to like as much. But we all have different tastes. And so the more you read, the more you'll discover something that you really like. It took me a long time before I found authors that really gripped me with their stories. But once I did, it was great. You know, anytime I was bored, you just pick up a book and you read and you do it till whenever. It's probably one of the few times where you sit around and nobody else at you for just sitting around. <laughs> That's very true. I hadn't thought of it quite that way before. Well, Marco, I want to thank you for spending time with us today. And thank you for talking to us about this great book, Rocks of Boxen. And I appreciate your time. I really appreciate you inviting me. It was fantastic. And it was a fun book to read. Roxaboxen is a magical place that was created by children, just out of rocks and old boxes. Alice, the author, she remembers Roxaboxen from when she was young. And she travels back after she's grown tall. Here's a picture of her standing at the very top of Roxaboxen and she gets to see some of the artifacts from when she was a child. She finds some of the streets that were laid out and even some of the boxes that are still there. It's wonderful to use your imagination to create something brand new. Now, Alice McLaren also gave us some great words for our word bank. The first word for our word bank is the word plain. Plain. 
That means lacking ornamentation, undecorated. Our next word is the word pottery. Pottery. That means pots, dishes, and other items that are made out of baked clay. Our next word is a word that Marco used, amethyst. Amethyst. That's a precious stone that's usually a deep purple color. Our next word is the word whooping. Whooping. That means a loud, strong shout or a cheer. And our final word for our word bank is the word stamping. Stamping. That means to bring your foot down heavily to the ground. Our activity for this week is for you to build your own village, your own rocks of oxen. Now, you might not have an empty field or, or a desert like our author did, but you could do it right in your own house. I'm going to build a little village right here on my desk. So, I have some empty boxes I'm going to start with. So, I'm going to set Melba up. This box is going to be my movie theater. And over here, this box is going to be my school. And then, I'm going to set up this box here. This box is going to be the grocery store. And over here is going to be the recreation center. This is going to be my house, and I've always wanted to live in a tower. So this is going to be my house. And then I could take little pebbles or pieces of paper and make the streets. I could make the route from my house to the movie theater, or from the movie theater to the recreation center. And if I wanted to, I could cover these boxes in paper and draw signs on them, I could make my little village any way I wanted it to be. I'm thinking I'd like to make my village a little magical. Maybe I could put in a castle. Or maybe, what do you think I should make out of this box? Hmm, I know. I'm going to make this box a magic cave. And if you go inside, you get all the wishes in the world. I hope you'll take some time and create a magic village of your own. If you do, take a picture of it and send it to us. You can send it to connect at gradelevelreadingsuncoast.net. We've received a lot of pictures this summer from a lot of children doing different activities. Here are a few of the pictures that were sent to us. Remember to keep reading. Reading is the key to succeeding. Thanks for being with us today. Bye-bye from my very own Roxaboxin. Roxaboxin.